Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to have a look at the brand new Leica M11 monochrome. This is the fourth dedicated monochrome camera in the M series from Leica, and it is based on the M11 that we saw come out last year in 2022. Today, Leica also announced an update to the 50mm f1.4 Sumalux M ASPH lens. If you follow this channel, you probably know that the current version of the 50mm Sumalux is probably my favorite 50mm lens ever made. In fact, I've actually been working on a dedicated video to that. It's going to be ready soon. If I have it launched by the time you're watching it, I'll link it up here and down below. But anyway, that is also coming. So this lens is going to be much like the 35mm Sumalux upgrade from last year. So it's a similar treatment. The optical design, as far as I know, is the same, if not very similar, but the casing is actually smaller. There's a different built-in lens hood, and we will have the same close focus option like we have with the 35mm Sumalux, where you can extend the minimum focus through the EVF from 70 centimeters down to 45 centimeters. Unfortunately, Leica didn't have any samples available at the moment, so we'll have to take a look at that in a later video once I've had a chance to actually shoot with the lens, but I have had an opportunity to shoot with the M11 Monarch Chrome, which is what we're going to talk about in this video today, so let's dive in. So like the M11, the M11 monochrome uses a backside illuminated 60 megapixel sensor that renders in three resolutions natively, 60 megapixels, 36 megapixels, and 18 megapixels. This is RAW and JPEG. The base ISO in this camera is now 125. The maximum ISO has been raised to 200,000. Much like the M11 had internal memory of 64 gigabytes, we've been upgraded in the M11 monochrome to 256 gigabytes of internal memory. It has an all black design, in other words, no logo. It's got dark chrome viewfinder coating, an aluminum top cover, and the scratch resistant black paint finish. The rear screen features a sapphire cover glass. This is what's used in watchmaking now. It's completely scratch resistant. We've also got a fast connection to the Leica Photos app for a high speed mobile workflow. And of course, made in Germany, which represents the highest quality standard available. So as we're talking about the M11 monochrome, I think this is actually really important to take this from two different points of comparison. So in terms of resolution, body handling, image quality, it's obviously going to be very similar to the M11. Now this is a monochrome camera, so I think it's also important to compare it to its predecessor, which would be the M10 monochrome. I actually own both of these cameras. I've used them a lot over the last year, and I think that these two cameras represent the best two sensors that you're gonna find in any camera system today. Now I realize that monochrome cameras are a very specific camera type, and they have a much more limited appeal than a full color camera. And this is largely because I think most people don't understand how a dedicated monochrome camera is actually going to benefit them in terms of sensitivity and also dynamic range. Now I often get the argument, well, I can just make a monochrome image from color in post-production. And while yes, that is true, a dedicated monochrome camera does not have a Bayer filter. So the opportunity here is for you to achieve a much higher performance in areas like low light, dynamic range, or even detail, since there is no interpolation happening to create that color image. I've actually done a whole video on the case for monochrome cameras, and if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you check it out. I'll link it up here as well as in the show description. So the body and handling of the M11 monochrome is pretty much the same as the black version of the M11, except, well, it's more black. Like the monochrome like as before it, the M11 monochrome has no red dot logo. The white model designation text is not painted, nor are the indicator marks. They're simply embossed into the body and appear to be black. The red auto setting markings on the ISO and shutter speed dials and the red dot for the camera power indicator are also rendered in dark gray. The shutter release, well, it's black. The lens release, it's also black. They've used dark chrome instead of silver on the exterior of the viewfinder. And like the M10 monochrome, the word monochrome is embossed at the front of the top plate. Handling is pretty much exactly like the M11. I actually recommend the Leica thumb grip for balancing the body better in your right hand. The idea is it's going to be similar to Leica film bodies that allow your thumb to rest on the film advance lever. The Leica rangefinder for me is really the standard for any camera body. And sadly, this is a design that's been abandoned by just about every manufacturer after the 1970s. Leica has kept this form as the identity of the M series. And what I love most about it is it's small and it's unobtrusive. So for the work that I do, the size of the camera is really important for me, both for both traveling as well as shooting. 
And this is the whole point of the M system. It's to be compact. If I'm shooting in public, I try to avoid people around me becoming quote unquote camera aware. I want a camera that is out and ready to go without being cumbersome to carry. I want to be able to shoot in quiet and sensitive situations without causing distraction. And this is the entire intention of the M system. It's carried out in both the M11 and now the M11 monochrome. And by the way, this bag that I've been using in this video is made by Oberworth. This is the M bag. Now this is not a sponsored placement. Oberworth did send me the bag to check out to get my thoughts. I've been using it for the last month and I absolutely love it. It was specifically designed for the M system, but it would work with any compact setup where you want to just carry the essentials. I can easily get two bodies and several lenses in this. It's about having the right options with me without being overbearing to carry. The M bag is part of Oberworth's Hydro lineup, which uses extremely high quality vegetable tanned leather, which is prepared to be water repellent. And I'm sure Leica will really be impressed to know that I'm pouring a glass of water over this bag with their loner inside. But I'm just showing you how good this bag is when you happen to get caught in the elements. Oberworth has a monochrome edition of this bag as well. It has the extra stark black look. It's really a beautiful bag as the form clearly follows function and it's gonna give you a lifetime of use. If you want to learn more and get one for yourself, you can use the link in the description of this video. You will see an offer code that will save you 15% on your purchase of any bag. So let's talk about the sensor in the M11 monochrome. So just like the M11, we've got a 60 megapixel backside illuminated sensor. It is a tri-resolution sensor. So what this means is that we can output both RAW and JPEG files at either 60 megapixels, 36 megapixels, or 18 megapixels. And because we're downsampling in camera, you actually gain another stop of dynamic range the lower you go when you get down to 18. So if it's a similar type sensor, what makes the monochrome sensor unique? So the M11 monochrome sensor is not unique per se because technically all digital camera sensors are monochrome. The role of a digital camera sensor is simply to collect light. Color is achieved by using a filter that physically sits on top of the sensor, and most commonly a Bayer type is used. This filter will separate light into red, blue, and green segments by pixel, and these different colored pixels are interpolated by the processor this gives us a color image in the output. So the M11 monochrome sensor is unique because of its implementation. So we don't have that Bayer color filter, so this is going to open up a lot in terms of performance. So immediately, if we look at the difference with base ISOs, the difference is a full stop of light without having that filter in the stack. The M11's base ISO is 64, and the M11 monochrome is 125. So the resulting image is going to be black and white, but we're gonna get much more light to the sensor, thus more performance and potential. The image quality that you get from the M11 monochrome is simply outstanding. Dynamic range is probably the most impressive feature for me. In post-production, you get an enormous amount of latitude. So therefore, the flexibility in the images that you want to create increases considerably. This is not unlike the days when I shot black and white film and I was outspoken advocate of the zone system of metering and developing film. The difference here, though, is that the process is digital and it requires far less pre-planning and you don't have to calculate film development times. And I feel the same way about the M10 monochrome, and I've had an enormous amount of experience with that camera. Until now, that has been my favorite camera for black and white photography. But there are two things, though, that the M11 monochrome does that raises the bar even higher. So first, obviously, is resolution. We have 60 megapixels as opposed to 40 megapixels in the M10 monochrome. The second major difference is the way the camera actually meters. So the M10 monochrome used an internal meter that used the shutter curtain, and it would reflect light from the scene and it used that to meter before the shot was taken. And this only gives you the options for spot or center weighted average metering. So the M11 monochrome, which works like the M11, when you turn the camera on, the shutter immediately opens and it's constantly giving a full data readout metering, which will give you the extended options for multi-field as well as highlight priority weighted options. The reason this is important is detail is in the highlights. Once highlights are clipped, there is a little recovery with this camera, but that's where the spectrum really maxes out. So if highlight detail is important in the image, correct metering is absolutely essential for protecting detail and texture in those high tonal values. The M11 monochrome is a much more powerful camera than the M10 in terms of resolution, but also in the operation of in-camera metering. Also interesting, and I did test this, is Leica are boasting a six-stop recovery if you're using the base ISO. So 
So what this means is at the base ISO, you can actually recover an image that's six stops underexposed. This is actually hard to test because Lightroom has a maximum of five stops of recovery on the slider for exposure. So you're gonna have to play with the curves as well, but you can see in the sample images that I've got here that it really is pretty impressive. But the upside to all this is first of all, sensitivity really isn't an issue. And what I love about this is I can actually stop the lens down. I don't have to always be shooting wide open. If I need more depth of field in low light, I can get it. And that's one of the things that's really awesome about the M11 monochrome. In fact, for the maximum ISO sensitivity, because you do have options in the menus of where you want to set that when you're in automatic mode, I just pretty much crank that all the way up. I know when I'm going to be pushing it that high, but most of the time it gets nowhere near there. It's really, really impressive that we're in a situation now in this day and age where this is available to us. And of course, I would love to know what you think in the comments. I realize that I'm probably not going to convince everyone that a dedicated monochrome camera really is the way to go, but I do want to show you what it is that will do. I realize that Leica are kind of tough sell because the point of entry is a pretty costly investment, but it is really amazing what these things will do. I think they represent some of the most interesting things that you can do in terms of the limits that you can push with digital imaging today. I want to give a special thanks to Leica for loaning me this camera to review for you guys. And if you have any questions, drop them below. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.